Hello Tech Pros, episode 205. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people and communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to be back on day two of our free seven-day course that will give you the framework that you need to start your very first business. Now, you can get access to the full seven-day course. If this is the first time that you've tuned in and you missed yesterday's, don't worry. You can get access to all seven episodes of this podcast, including all of the resources, action items, and homework that we covered by visiting hellotechpros.com slash start. That's hellotechpros.com slash start. You're going to want to sign up for the for the course because in the emails, I'm going to hold you accountable for actually following the homework, and the homework is what is going to get your business off the ground. If you just listen to a lot of podcasts, if you just read a lot of blogs, if you just... Uh, have a lot of input, but don't actually create output. If you're not generating or producing anything at the end of the day, if you're not changing any of your behaviors, then you're just wasting a lot of time. And that's called being a entrepreneur. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm not trying to piss you off. I'm just trying to call it as it is because I was a entrepreneur. Oh gosh, I want to cry right now. I was a entrepreneur for many, many, many years. There were so many different business ideas that I've had that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start a whole bunch of business ideas. And you know what? In in uh, one of my emails in the email course, the com- the compendium course that goes along with this, the email course that goes along, um, I share a bunch of domain names that I bought in the past that uh, some of them I still own, some of them I've let expire but I never actually built anything around it. Or some of them, I just put together a quick and dirty website. Others, I had plans for a whole uh, a whole uh, architecture, like technical architecture and infrastructure and a lot of code I started working on and never actually built them. I've got a lot of domain names that I haven't even bought, but a ton of them in my Evernote notebook idea junkie um, that I wanted to buy, but I just didn't have the funds for, thankfully. Um, I didn't spend any money on these domains. And then I've got a lot of app ideas of apps that I fully intended to launch a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and never launched them because of a lot of motivational reasons that I covered in yesterday's podcast. A lot of reasons about, you know, not being sure if it was the right product or I got distracted by shiny object object syndrome or I got really really close but then I started worrying about oh my gosh maybe maybe there's a little bit of copy infringement and I just need to scrap the whole thing or or if I start working on this and it makes a little bit of money so that's good but then I have to start supporting my customers providing customer support and then how am I going to do that with a day job and I can't give up my day job because I've got uh, health benefits and uh, all this anxiety Whew, man, it's stressing me out just thinking about it. But all this anxiety that I've had in the past about wanting to start a business, but I could never commit. I can never commit myself and commit my time and commit the follow through and hold myself accountable to launching it and putting it out there. A lot of that due to the fear of failure, a lot of it due to the fear of success, a lot of it due to the fear of the unknown. And I talk about all those fears and how you can get over them in yesterday's podcast and at the end of the podcast i had some homework for you you're going to want to get access to the podcast and to the homework by visiting hellotechpros.com slash start so now that we've talked about how to get past that anxiety and to unlock those handcuffs that are uh, those golden handcuffs that are handcuffing you to your miserable nine to five day job you know what um if we're if we're this excited, we're like, okay, yes, yes, I want to do it, but I still question whether or not the idea that I have is the right idea, like, or do I even have an idea of what I'm supposed to build? Like, is it a product? Is it a service? Is it a consultancy? 
Is it a freelance business? Like, what is it? How do I know what I should do? I, Chad, you have totally sold me yesterday on, uh, I'm breaking those golden handcuffs and getting past my fear. Yes, I want to do it, but what do I do? Where do I where do I want to work? And this is also uh, can be another anxiety, and we kind of briefly touched on it yesterday. But the what do I do and which is the right idea is a big big problem that a lot of people face, and that's a reason why a huge reason why I bought all those domain names. And I started working on all those different code bases that never got released. Is because I would start working on them, and then something about it just made me go, "Yeah, I'm not so sure." And that I'm not so sure is a motivational killer. And unfortunately, it happens all the time. Not just with folks like me who who struggle with social anxiety, but just people in general. I hear so many entrepreneurship stories about the fear of failure or the fear of um, you know not sure if this business idea is a good one or not or a great one or not and they don't follow through and they don't commit or like in my past uh, suffering from shiny object syndrome I start working on something and I go this is a pretty solid good idea this is pretty decent I think it's got some merit and I work on it for about five days and then <gasps> you know what? This leads me to a better idea, and the better idea has a lot of merit. And so I start working on that, and I start doing a lot of research, and I start putting some things together. And then I have a great idea, and the great idea is even better than those other two put together. And I have to secure like five domain names of all the different .com, .org, .net, .everything so that I can lock it up because the IP is going to be so valuable. And then it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And at the end of a year, in my case, at the end of 10 years, 15 years, and on and on past that, I've collected a lot of domains. I've collected a lot of ideas. I've done a lot of research, but I haven't launched anything. I haven't done anything. I'm still a entrepreneur. Are you a entrepreneur? Are you doing this? Are you falling into the same cycle that I am or that I have? in the past over and over and over again of just trying to go to the next thing and then getting stressed out about that next thing or not believing in it or not caring about it enough. I've had things that I still today feel that are huge money-making opportunities. I have ideas in my notebook. I have code on my computer. I have a lot of notes and a lot of things put together about really big potential ideas that I think could make a ton of money, could serve a heck of an audience. But here's the problem. I don't care about it. (laughs) Like I literally, I look at it from from the revenue perspective and I say, yes, there's potential. And then I look at it from like, what does it take to make it successful? And do I really want to be working in that space? And I go, Meh. I mean, I can, but there's so many other things I'd rather be doing. I would rather be doing just about anything else than working on that business idea. Gosh, in a lot of cases, I would rather just work for the man, work for uh, a nine to five job than work on some of those amazing, brilliant business ideas because it's just not my thing. It's just not a domain that I care about. It's just not an industry that gets me excited. It's just not a problem that I resonate with. It's just not the customers that I want to hassle with, that I want to deal with. And so this all comes down to affecting your productivity, right? If you're not extremely tapped in and motivated to give it your all and you're not 100% bought into it, then your productivity is going to just be complete crap, to be honest. Um. Even if you are like, okay, I, I want to work on this because I think there's a there's a money making opportunity here, it's going to turn into a grind, and that grind is going to mean that you're going to start looking for the next shiny object. And even if you launch your business, your business is going to do kind of half hearted success because if your heart's not into it, it's going to be another job, and your productivity is going to suffer, your results are going to suffer, and overall, it's not going to be the best thing that you can do. So 
I can't tell you how many thousands of hours, oh my gosh, it makes me want to cry thinking about and trying to do the quick math in my head, thousands and thousands of hours that I have wasted on all of these ideas, either just research, it's just, shoot, just just on GoDaddy itself, just going to GoDaddy and searching for an available domain and trying to find one is probably hundreds of hours of my life gone. And then once I actually buy them, um, or forget the domain name, just crack open the code and start working on the code, or doing uh, a lot of uh, business research, market research, thousands and thousands of hours that I have wasted not actually producing anything, not actually getting in front of a potential customer and talking to the customers about what they want. So um, this is a huge, huge time sink. I have wasted so much time. and, And if you're anything like me, you are sick and tired of playing that game. You're sick and tired of working on something and then not launching it, of, of being a, a, a doer but not a finisher. I feel that I, I had a really, really strong feeling of myself, and it kind of dives into a lot of the social anxiety stuff for one more layer on the social anxiety, is I got really, really down on myself at the end of last year, at the end of 2015. And I had a conversation with my wife and I said, "Um, you know what, all these ideas that we've talked about, all the code that I've written, all the websites that I've bought and started working on or even put out there like an MVP site but never actually committed to, you know, trying to get customers to sign up or trying to launch anything, it's just like, blogging an article or two or three or, you know, whatever, just kind of half-hearted effort that I've put into it or a lot of effort, but then giving up on it, I never followed through. I never finished. And I felt that I was turning into, or I was just by nature, a non-finisher, a non-producer. I could work. I was a hard worker, but the results at the end of the day were nothing, nothing to show for it, no money to show for it, no customers to show for it, no relationships, uh, like business relationships to show for it. All I had was like more experience in learning, right? More education, like hands-on education, more trial and error with code. Um, but if, if you're getting, if you're getting paid by the hour or paid by the project to trial and error code for somebody else, that's great. But when you're doing it for yourself, and that experience doesn't add up to anything at the end of the day. Like I'm not getting a promotion at work because of the, the stuff I'm working on at home. I'm not making any money because the stuff I'm working on in my spare time is not being pushed in front of potential customers or not being marketed. Then it's all a waste of time. And that productivity killer can be a motivation killer, right? You need the motivation to get to the point where you're trying to be productive. But if you're not productive then it's going to affect your motivation. And it's like a vicious circle, you know? So you gotta have both. You gotta have both of them back to back. Like first get the motivation to, yes, I wanna do this. And then second on the productivity, you have to commit to actually following through and making it happen. And that's tough to do, as we said before, if you don't have the right idea. So one of the things um, I'm going to give out some recommendations here on, on some books and some, uh, some processes. And it it's, has been a lot of things that I have put together recently and just launching Hello Tech Pros that have changed me from being um, a, a doer but not a finisher into a finisher, right? So one is the fact that you don't need to necessarily get super, super excited about a particular solution, whatever solution or idea or product or service that you're thinking about is just an idea. And it may be good, it may be great, it may be crap, it may be fantastic. You don't know until you actually try to pitch it and sell it and and, and work by, by work, I was about to say by work on it. Um, but when I, when I say work on it, I mean work on the business aspect of it. So, what you have to do here is not 
sell yourself on the idea or the solution, you have to really, really get committed to the problem. And what I mean by that is customers have problems. Um, I heard a, I heard a good quote a while ago. I have no idea who to attribute it to, but they said, um, you know, do people really want a drill or do they just want a hole? <laughs> a lot of times what we're trying to do is build a better drill. We're trying to come up with a better drill bit, a faster drill, a chargeless, you know, a, a wireless drill. And at the end of the day, sometimes customers don't want a drill. They just want a hole in a piece of wood or a hole in a cinder block, right? Uh, I have bought, I'm not, I'm not a tool guy. Like I'm not a handyman DIY kind of build it yourself guy, but I still own lots of tools that are out in my garage that I've used once, literally once because I just needed a hole. Like I just needed a drill bit. I didn't need a drill bit. I just needed a hole that was one and a half inches in diameter through a two by four. And unfortunately, I didn't know anybody that had a one and a half inch drill bit, or I knew plenty of people that had a one and a half inch drill bit and a drill, but I was too afraid to ask to borrow it, or I was, uh, I didn't want to interrupt their time, or I didn't want to have to deal with all of their, whatever, all of their stuff. So I go out to the, uh, the home improvement store, I get a drill or I get a new drill bit and I plug it in, I bzz, 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 bust through it. And then that's it. Then that drill bit goes in my toolbox and I've never touched it again in the last seven or eight years. And I can't tell you how many of these one-off tools that I have in my toolbox. I'm not a tool guy, but I end up collecting tools because I don't have a good process to find the right solution. And I think there's a lot of customers out there who really, really want something to solve their problem. And so you as the producer, you as the business owner, don't get so wrapped around the idea that you're going to be the guy or gal that's going to produce one and a half inch drill bits. And that's your thing. That's what you're going to do. Get wrapped around the fact that there's a lot of people that just need a hole in a two by four, if that makes sense. So think about your potential customer. And I think the biggest the biggest thing that I've really gotten in touch with recently is not about do I want to start a podcast, not about do I want to build an app, not about am I a blogger or uh, affiliate marketer or whatever, am I a consultant or a coach or a trainer. It's really getting in touch with who are the kind of people that I want to serve and what are the problems that they have. This is having a huge impact on my productivity right now, like right now, literally, um, a huge difference between a few months ago when I launched Hello Tech Pros, just 200 and something episodes ago, and now today, my um, my avatar, my customer avatar of who I want to help is getting really, really focused now. And because it was unfocused, because it was fuzzy, because it was more broad at the very beginning... I actually caused a lot of problems for myself when building this business. But now that I'm getting much, much more clear on the type of people that I want to help, then that's helping helping me determine what their problems are and what which of those problems I'm more suited to help and how I can help them. So let me give you a real world example, example here. In all the other domains, all the other... Uh, uh, websites that I've thought about building, all the other apps that I've thought about building, I didn't have an idea of who the target audience was, right? Maybe it was a corporation, maybe it was a business, um, maybe it was a, a, a stay-at-home mom, maybe it was uh, an IT worker or a coder, but just kind of very, very broad. Didn't have specifics on what their problems were. Just like, hey, they need this, they want this video game or they want to learn how to make more money because I want to learn how to make more money, so they probably want to make more money too. Um, uh, people who want to, I don't know, just completely random. If you go to hellotechpros.com slash start, I'll send you that email <laughs> that's got a list of all the domain names, and you can take a look at them, and you can say, okay, gosh, I, I kind of see what he's doing here, or what was he thinking? 
I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe the idea that you get by looking at that domain name is completely different from the idea that I had. And then maybe the customer that you're thinking about is completely different from the customer or the avatar or the uh, blog reader or whoever. So I've always struggled with not really having a good idea of who I wanted to serve. Until I got to Hello Tech Pros, and when I decided I wanted to launch this podcast, I said, you know what? I'm basically, what I'm trying to do is help a junior Chad. When I put this podcast together, I'm like, what did Chad need a long time ago? What did Chad need like 12 years ago or 15 years ago when I was really getting first started into my career as a software developer or my career as you know, uh, an IT manager? And what what were the things throughout my career that have really made a difference to me? What were the things that I learned about that have really inspired me and motivated me and got me uh, to the next level in my career? So a lot of the stuff that we talked about in uh, the last Signature Series week, right? The uh, Launch Your Career into Hyperdrive week, which you can go to that course at hellotechpros.com slash career and get access to that if that's what you're trying to do is maximize your career. But the things that I figured out about myself or what are the things that helped me, right? It was, it, I broke it down into these seven aspects of the, the seven topics that have really made a huge difference in, in building my career. And that's been motivation, productivity, leadership, technology, people and relationships and communication and entrepreneurship and being unplugged. And so that's why I started this seven day a week program. That's a big reason why I started the seven day a week program is because those are the topics that have really made a huge impact in my career. And so I said, you know what? One of the best things about my career, one of my favorite things ever was having one-on-one conversations with my employees when I was a, uh, a manager. And the other thing was just listening into people's conversations and getting advice from other people who were rock stars in their own domain and figuring out what made them tick and what made them successful and how did they get it all done. Like, John, you are the most productive person I have ever met in my life. Like, how do you get all this stuff done? How do you do it? And he goes, oh, it's really easy. I just I focus on the one thing every day that's the most important. I don't have a to-do list of 59 things. I have my one thing every day that I'm going to get done. And that is the one thing that's going to make the biggest impact to the project or to the department or to the business or to the company. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me write that down. Let me think about that. Uh, You know, Karen, how do you have a bright, shining, happy relationship with everybody in this organization? Like, I don't understand how you can be a social butterfly. I wish I was an extrovert like you. And she goes, actually, Chad, I'm an introvert. I, I get, my, um, get my energy back by having alone time and reading a book and having peace and quiet when nobody else is around. But at work, I build relationships with people and here's how I do it. Here, here's how I break into those uh, those elite circles at work, and here's how I develop relationships. It's pretty easy. And I go, oh, wow, cool. And then I start applying it. So these are the, these are the problems, or, or this problem, the helping the, the past Chad, if I could send these podcasts back in time to, uh, to a 20-something-year-old Chad and listen to these podcasts again, then I would have all of this information back then that I know now, right? So I'm trying to give myself all of the wisdom. If I can't give myself all the wisdom, then I'm giving you the audience, the people uh, that are dialing into this podcast every day, especially as a subscriber. There's a, there's a lot of folks who just he, uh, just see like a keyword or their their buddy is tagged in social media and uh, or, or somebody's just searching or it may be, you know, something, a, a title is trending and they go, oh, that's cool. And they check it out. Um, and then they go on about their day. But you guys, the subscribers who listen to my, vo- my voice every day, even when I can't speak English, <laughs> even when I stumble over my own words, you guys who, who listen to this podcast day in and day out, even if you only have like two days a week that you can actually listen, but you, you listen for three hours while you're cutting the grass in the backyard, 
uh, on your little ranch and you, uh, you other person listen while you're going on a really long run, like this is what I'm trying to do. This is why I built Hello Tech Pros was to help you folks with building your career, building your business through these seven aspects that I've learned. Motivation, productivity, um, gosh, I just blanked out. Motivation, productivity, leadership, technology, people, entrepreneurship, and being unplugged. Gosh, you would think after 205 episodes, I would know them, but uh, you know, it's been a long day. So anyway, I am, I want to help in this area, this area I want to help in when I launched Hello Tech Pros, this is the problem that I want to help in. But what's the solution? Well, it's a podcast, but every day is going to be a little bit different, right? Every day I'm talking to a different guest. Are there going to be, am I going to write a book about all this stuff? I don't know, maybe. Am I going to uh, make videos, have a, a training course, which I just uh, produced a few weeks ago, right? HelloTechPros.com slash slash career. Gosh, man, it's been a long day. HelloTechPros.com slash career to get access to that course, right? There's a lot of things, a lot of different ways that I could help out um, people in this area. I could help out a lot of people on motivation by maybe doing some public speaking. I don't know. I, I'm not tied to a particular solution. And that's why the podcast itself, the, have, the seven day a week podcast, Hello Tech Pros, will probably change at some point. Again, because I'm not tied to the solution. I'm not tied permanently to this being a seven day a week podcast with these particular seven day a week topics that we're talking about. What I'm tied to, what I'm really sold on is helping people, tech, uh, technology professionals build their career and build their business and and have a, have a healthier lifestyle. And by lifestyle, I mean, uh, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. What I mean is recently, since episode 141 came out, my avatar, my perfect person, my Chad from 15 years ago, my Chad from 20 years ago, that that the customer that I want to help, the podcast listener that I want to help, it has now become crystal clear on the problem that I want to solve in the area that I'm trying to work in. And I, I actually didn't know it back in February and March in 2016 when I launched Hello Tech Pros. I thought it was just help a technical professional build their career. Now, after episode 141, it's about social anxiety. The biggest struggle that I've ever dealt with my entire life. The biggest unsung problem that's keeping so many technical professionals down in their career or from launching their business is in social anxiety. So that's where I am going to be shifting. My focus is now kind of broad, like a, uh, we lost electricity a couple of weeks ago. And so we have this lantern and you turn on the lantern and it kind of, it bathes the whole room in light and you kind of get a, a pretty good sense of what's going on, right? Versus a spotlight you're pointing exactly on the thing that you're trying to read or the thing that you're trying to do. So my lantern, Hello Tech Pros, is, will be shifting into a spotlight on social anxiety because that's where my passion is. I have so much empathy for people who are struggling in this area. I have so much just passion about, gosh, there's so many, there's so many chads out there who want to have a lot of fun at work and want to have a lot of fun in life, but they can't because their internal dialogue is like, dude, you're not good enough. You suck. You say stupid things. Uh, people think you're an idiot. You can't do that. You're going to, you're going to look like a fool. You can't say that because, uh, there's no telling what people might think. Uh, your parents won't like you anymore. Your friends will, uh, start going against you. You're going to lose everything that you have. This internal dialogue that a lot of people have is is a killer, literally a killer. And if you go back to hellotechpros.com slash 141, 141, that episode, I talked about how it literally almost killed me. I survived. I got through it. And I'm no expert yet. Uh, I'm certainly no doctor. I'm certainly no psychologist, but I've learned a lot of 
a lot of tactics, a lot of strategies, a lot of techniques in order to overcome the anxiety. I had a person the other day ask me, how come you're not afraid anymore? What got you over your fear? Why are you not afraid to speak in public? Why are you not afraid to meet new people, talk to your guests on your podcast, uh, meet people in public, um, you know, have play dates for your daughter with, with other kids and their parents? And I said, I, I still have the fear. The fear is still in me. The difference is today I face it. Today I have the, uh, the experience and the trials and the techniques and, and, and all of the lessons that I've learned over the last 15 and 20 years to be okay with, I hear that noise that my head generates, but I get past it. And so that's what I want to help. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people on this podcast that, that are regular listeners that are be like, okay, well, I kind of like the overall stuff about motivation or about entrepreneurship, but I don't have social anxiety. And so I'm probably going to be tuning out and dialing out. That's okay. That's cool. Because right now I'm serving a broad audience on a lot of different things. But what's really, really valuable is figuring out that one customer, that one person who is going to give you everything that they've got. And I don't mean money, although that's a big part of it, but I mean they're really going to just buy into the problem that you're solving. Because Chad's serving, helping people, um, you know, grow their career, whatever that means, versus helping a person be brave enough to speak up to their boss and ask for a raise, that's a huge difference, right? Chad teaching people how to, um, how to get a promotion is great. That's fantastic. But me helping someone who is so nervous that they can't speak out loud in a daily stand-up meeting and they have to, they feel like they have to just uh, submit their notes via email because email is comfortable. But when they talk out loud, their face goes bright red. They break out into hives. They stutter. They start sweating. And they just feel so bad and nervous about themselves speaking in public to their own team members that they'd rather not go to work. They'd rather stay home sick or they'd rather quit their job and, and just, I don't know, just do whatever, horrible things. If I can help those people, that will be a huge, huge win for me. I'm sold on that problem. So what I want you to do is really take into consideration, not the idea that you have, not the not the solution that you have, but what's the problem? Where is the problem that you're going to work? Is it in what? Is it in, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. What what is it, what is the solution that you're trying to work on? You've probably got a dozen different ideas. You you probably if you're anything like me have collected a couple of different domain names over the past. What were you trying to do with them? Okay. Now let's turn it on its head. What are the specific problems, the specific people that you're trying to serve and what are the problems that they need? What let let's really get in touch with who your audience is, who your customers are. What are the type of people that you're going to be helping? And if we can do that, if we can really, really identify who the people are, then that makes everything so much easier. And the reason we're talking about this today on Productivity Tuesday is not just because, you know, if we lose our motivation, then we lose our productivity. If we lose our productivity, we lose our motivation that we talked about at the beginning of the episode. But if we have a crystal clear picture on who our audience is, on who our customers are, then it doesn't matter what we sell them. It doesn't matter if it's a product or a service. If we can articulate the problem that they have more efficiently, more effectively than they can articulate it, then they will assume that we have the answer. If you can articulate the problem that your customers have better than the customers can articulate it themselves, they will naturally assume that you have the right solution and they will ask you, yeah, that that's exactly what I feel. Oh my gosh. Like, I have, I have been in stand-ups and I don't want to say that I'm late behind schedule because I haven't figured out my code yet because I don't want to say that. I can't speak up. I can't give I can't give negative feedback. I can't tell people bad stuff. So I I 
I, I have a problem, right? I can't ask my boss for a raise because if I ask for a raise, I feel like that slimy scumbag Scott down the hall who's just a schmoozy dillweed. I don't want to feel like that guy. I don't want to feel like that. And he comes across to me like a total dirt bag. And I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to come across like that. And so I don't ask for a raise. And I don't talk to the boss about my feelings and my stuff. Because I fear that he's going to judge me or she's going to judge me the way that I think is very negative. So if you can really identify with your customer, if you can really identify, hey, I'm teaching a person about golf and not just teaching a person about golf. I'm really helping with a person that I'm helping is that brand new newbie, newbie golfer who's 40 years old and who has the money to buy the equipment, but has never, ever swung a golf club in his life. I'm not trying to help the Arnold Palmer enthusiasts, right? Take their game from a, I have no idea what I'm talking about here because I'm not a golfer. Take their game from a 62 down to a 61, right? Or to to make their driver go from 330 yards to 332 yards. That's not the problem I'm trying to help. I'm really trying to help the brand new newbie golfer who has <laughs> who literally doesn't know anything like he's talking about right here on the podcast. But he's kind of interested in golf. He just has never never done it before. So I want to help Chad become a golfer. I want to take that newbie newbie golfer and just teach them how to swing for the first time. So what's the problem? What what is the problem that you're working on? What's the area that you're working on? More specifically, who is the customer that you want to help solve their problems? Who's the customer that you would like to interact with? What type of people is it? Is it people with like I don't know, just what kind of issue is it? If you go to hellotechpros.com slash start, please sign up for the full course to get access to all of the episodes. And in there, I'll send you an email with a homework in it. Reply back to that homework and let me know what your avatar, your customer, your favorite person is, your favorite customer is that you want to help. And then after that, it will be a lot easier to identify the solution. It doesn't make any sense on working on a solution if you don't know 100% about your audience, about your customer. If you know your customer, if you know every single detail about her, then you probably have five or six or 10 or 20 different products that you could offer to her that would solve her problem or solve different aspects of her problems, problems, multiple problems because she probably has more than one. But if you if you only have a solution that you're trying to sell, if you only have a coaching program, but you don't, don't know who exactly wants it, then you're offering a solution to a broad audience of people and it's gonna be really, really hard to connect with them. Find that person first, find that one person. I wanna help the social anxious Chad of 20 years ago to get over his social anxiety so that he can build his career and he can launch his business and he can get a wife and get a life. I want to help that person. That's the person that I want to help. I want you to I want you to answer me with something like that. Go to hellotechpros.com slash start and answer that homework question. And until next time, wait, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Don't go away yet. Tomorrow. We will, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to talk about when and how to bring on help for your startup. So once you identify that problem, you start working on it, you know, you may already be working on this problem, but it can get really overwhelming really quickly. Like once you find that passion, once you're like, okay, I'm working on this and I'm going 90 to nothing, a thousand miles per hour, then it can get overwhelming really, really quickly. And you can sometimes find yourself not making the productivity that you want to make because you got this nine to five job, because you have this full-time thing, because you got all these other commitments, because your kids got, uh, you know, their, their skating recitals and everything. It's just a balance. You're trying to balance it all and you can't get it all done. So tomorrow we're going to talk about when and how to bring on help for your startup so that you don't have to do it all yourself and you don't go into debt in the process. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Until next time, take care. 
The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 205. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash Slack. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Minio Cloud Storage. Minio is a cloud object storage server for developers and DevOps written in Go. The Go programming language is the emerging language of choice for modern cloud infrastructure projects, and it allows Minio to be highly concurrent and lightweight. Minio is Amazon S3 compatible, built with microstorage architecture in mind, but at its heart, Minio is simple, scalable, and supported by a passionate developer and user community. In episode 89 of Hello Tech Pros, I talked with A.B. Periasami, one of the founders of Minio, about the importance of community support and recruiting software developers who are as passionate about their product's code as artists are of their art. Check out that episode at hellotechpros.com slash 89 and check out Minio Cloud Storage at Minio.io. That's M-I-N-I-O dot I-O. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high-quality, yet budget-friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, writers, and graphic artists, they can help you build your podcast from planning, post-production, and platform submission. Using only cutting-edge software and studio equipment, they're here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send them an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call them at 209 505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Productivity Tuesday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I are talking about leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people in communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. Sunday, being unplugged. Monday, motivation. And then we do it all over again next Tuesday for productivity. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.